everyone, my name is Laura Aiello, and on behalf of the LCBO, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to get a preview of the April 3rd Vintages release featuring Wines of California. Before we get started, I have the pleasure of welcoming a very special guest, Ontario Somali founder and president of Femme de Ven, Emily Pierce. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Please tell us a little bit more about Femme de Ven and how that all came about. Great, yeah. No, I'm happy to be here and uh, going through these beautiful wines that we lined up today. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a wine writer, a judge, and a sommelier here in Ontario. But you're right. Truly, my heart is with the organization I founded in 2016 called Femme de Vin. Really a grassroots organization. It started actually in my backyard. Um, it is a not-for-profit for women in wine that focuses on education, mentorship, and scholarship. Uh, so yeah, check it out. There's a lot of great information on the website, free seminars, uh, femdevin.org. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being such an inspiration. So we're going to be focusing in on the vintages release and shopping for products from the release is always a lot of fun. Every two weeks, vintages features 125 new products. But as you know, these products are limited and can sell out. And that's what makes these products so exciting. As part of today's lineup, we will also be introducing two wines exclusive to our online shopping at lcbo.com. Amazing, amazing. So yeah, I see that we have eight wines to go through and so many places uh, throughout California to explore. Beautiful place. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, maybe we should get started. Yeah, and that's really the beauty of wine, isn't it? It can really transport you and bring you to a sense of place when traveling there might not actually be the current reality. Yeah, I think um, that really probably is the beauty right now. I think we could all use a little bit of a <laughs> virtual vacation, right? So I think uh, yeah. California is such an amazing place to, to get into, and we're going to explore a bit of the diversity and the beautiful terroir. Absolutely. But before we, get, before we begin, let me just remind everyone to please drink responsibly. Having plenty of water with some food to go along is always encouraged. Okay, so let's start with wine number one. The 2019 McMahon Pionier from River Junction mm -hmm. is our first wine, and it really brings forth a lot of tropical fruit, some orange, some citrus. What kind of fruits do you get, Emily? Yeah, this is a really interesting wine, isn't it? Uh, Viognier, you know, often uh, it has this beautiful florality note. And I think that this really echoes that. So, you know, have these beautiful orchard fruits of peaches and pears, but like beautiful florality kind of jumping out of the glass, like honeysuckle and peach blossom and pear blossom. Um, it's really quite nice. It's very heady with this florality. Um, it's quite beautiful. Um, I noticed that it's an unoaked version of this. You know, you often see oaked versions in California, so it's a little bit lighter on its feet. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more. Is the sustainability label that we see on the back of the label? Hmm. It's a pretty prominent label that indicates that it's certified green. So that's a big thing in California. Why don't you speak to us a little, why yeah, don't you speak to absolutely. us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so you see on the back of the label, it's uh, certified green Lodi rules, um, which is uh, really interesting. So sustainability, it's a, it's a buzzword we hear a lot about, especially in the world of wine. And I know when I think about sustainability, I think about green and reducing uh, our impact on the earth, but sustainability in the California perspective is really, really so much more. It is about the environment and preserving the ecosystem, but it's also economical, economic and social equality. That's to say, you know, how farming and the wine in industry affects the communities and the people working in it. So it's really kind of more of a holistic way of looking at sustainability. Um, and you're right, Laura, like there, um, there's a lot of different certifications that happen in California for sustainabilities. You know, there's the sustainability in practice, the SIP, there's Napa Green, and here, as you saw, this is the Lodi Rules uh, sustainability. Um, and that's really, really important because Lodi actually makes 20% of the, of the wine, 20% of the grapes are, of California are grown in there. So. You know, a lot of good comes from this kind of wine, and I sure feel good buying this wine, uh, knowing that uh, it's sustainable in all of those different kinds of ways. It's delicious. Wow, I will have to agree with you there. That's amazing. OK, 
Okay, so our next wine is the 2019 Rombauer Chardonnay from Carneros. This really is classic California Chardonnay with all its buttery richness and baked apple flavors. I immediately want to pair it with something decadent and delicious. Emily, why don't you speak to us a little bit about a classic food match and the California food scene? Uh, absolutely. So I couldn't agree with you more. There's a bit of a richness. There's a, I like to say kind of a bit of a pleasure about this wine. The fruit is really ripe. These yellow apples, there's a little bit of brioche and there's a wide sort of luscious texture on the palate of this wine. It really delivers that sort of um, California, California Chardonnay experience. So for me, um, you know, at this point, I'd probably put like a roasted pumpkin salad with this, something a little bit sweet, uh, something a little yeah. bit smoky um, to kind of pull out these lovely toasted notes in the wine. Um, and that is sort of a bit about this kind of California cuisine. So. California cuisine, it was a movement, it's a food movement that was started by a woman named Helen Evan Brown in the 1950s and 60s. And it focuses on dishes that are driven by local and sustainable and seasonal products. So it's wildly important and influential even now. So it started influencing people like Wolfgang Puck in the 1970s. And today, um, Thomas Keller of the French Laundry, Michael Mina, or Dominic Crenn from Atelier Crenn, all of these big chefs are all focused, are, are all influenced by California cuisine. Um, and that's exactly what I pair with this wine because it really, really speaks to it. It's delicious. It really is a special treat, this wine. I can't wait to mm. pair it with something. Maybe that pumpkin Absolutely. salad you're talking about. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> So for our next wine, it's perfect introduction as we kick off the rosé season. The 2019 Miami rosé is something you don't want to miss. Rosés from California really have a lot to offer. This would be great on its own or with an array of dishes. What are your thoughts on, the, on this wine, Emily, and on California rosé in general? Yeah, thanks. I love rosé. Uh, I think it's sad that people only drink it in the summertime. I think it's so versatile. You, could, you can enjoy it throughout the year. Um, California sort of got a bad rap with some of their rosés in the past. They used to be quite sort of um, quite sweet on the palate, but you're seeing these drier styles enter the market, and I think that this wine is a great example of that. Um, but it still has again that sort of pleasurable, bright, juicy fruit that you see from from California. For me, it's these beautiful sun-kissed strawberries. Uh, I know growing up in Ontario. Uh, I used to pick strawberries for my mom. We also used to go out and, and you'd, bring, you'd bring them back to the house and you'd have the pints left at the back door. And one day I forgot them there and came back a few hours later and they'd been sort of sitting in that sunshine. And, you know, for me, this is what that, this wine really reminds me of that, these kind of sun-drenched strawberries. Uh, it's really pleasurable. I, I would drink this wine just sitting out on a terrace with some fresh fruit in the sunshine. I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. It, it really, and it also has such a great acidity. I just, I just love it. And isn't it funny how wine can really make us think of something nostalgic and bring us back to a memory? Like, I just love that about wine. So Absolutely. Really I, I still think about those strawberries today. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for our next wine, we have the 2018 J. Lore Falcon's Perch Pinot Noir. And this is always a fan favorite. This wine comes from Monterey County, a prominent wine growing area, otherwise known as an ABA. Emily, this is a perfect opportunity for you to explain a little bit more about American viticultural areas or ABAs and how that can help when we're selecting wines to enjoy from the region. And then maybe when you're done talking a little bit about that, we can, we can touch upon the lovely tasting notes that are just jumping out of the glass here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Laura. So AVA, American Viticultural uh, Areas, as you as you noted, they were established in the United States of America in the early 1980s. And that was it was a way to ensure our guarantee quality to the consumer. Um, it set sort of rules up and it's continued to be the case and has really provided a way that consumers can understand what's in the bottle. So, you know, if you see something and it says Howl Mountain, that's going to mean something that's very different than it says Carneros because it really speaks to the unique and individual terroir of that region. So as you were saying with this wine, um, we have it from Monterey and, and that says something, right? So it's a cooler climate area. 
It's going to be more elegant. It's going to be more finessed. You're going to see cooler climate grapes being grown there, such as Pinot Noir, such as Chardonnay. Um, and you know what? I think it really speaks to that because this wine is really elegant. You know, if you look at it, like look at this beautiful color, beautiful ruby color. It just it's like this beautiful gemstone. And in the glass, you have cranberries and rhubarb. Yeah. Um, a little bit of sort of sweet, smoky, gravelly minerality. Um, it is quite elegant. And I, and I think mm -hmm. that it really speaks to this region um, um, and, and the styles that are coming out of this region. And it's very food friendly because as you were saying, that acidity is so bright and so lifted. Yeah. Um, you can pair this with something you know very simple um, or all the way up to a beautiful, perhaps roast duck with some cherry sauce. Uh, this is very gastronomic wine as well. Delicious. I can see why it's a fan favorite. You are making me very hungry here, Emily. <laughs> but uh, Pinot Noirs are so versatile when it comes to food matching, and this one is a prime example of that. So I'd have to agree with you there. Yeah. So for our next wine, we have the Trouble Troublemaker Red Blend from the Austin Hope Collection. Just to note, this wine is available exclusively online at lcbo.com. So I just got to say, don't you just love the name of this wine? You just know it's going to be fun spirited. I think it's a blend of about five different grapes. Is it not, Emily? It is. There's a whole bunch of grapes in here. And mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, what you said is, is really interesting, that it is sort of a fun wine. And I think that there is this incredible versatility in wines coming out of California where you might have something that is a little more um serious or gastronomic like that beautiful Ram rombauer chardonnay that we had and then you have this troublemaker yeah. wine and it, it it sort of speaks to that like this is a wine that i would see you know just enjoying it with friends on a on a beautiful mm -hmm. night on a beautiful night in um with simple fare maybe it's around a barbecue um casual wine and i think that's great i think that it's great that a lot of these wines are so approachable and so drinkable um, and I think California does a great job of blending the different grapes in the region to make that happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's really beautiful on the nose. It has a lot of dark fruits, some oak. Yeah, so yeah, and also some really pretty flowers as well, sort of violets in there, and lilac, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. And the palette's just so rich with some dark chocolate and black cherry. It's, it's just, it uh, really knocks me out. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So for our, our next wine, we have the 2018 Avalon Appalachian Series Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. And when one thinks of California wine, chances are they immediately think of Cabernet Sauvignon with all its dark berry fruits, spices, and cedar notes. Mm -hmm. The Avalon Cab is a wonderful example of Cabernet at its finest. Emily, why don't we talk a little bit more about Cabernet in terms of uh, California and how best to enjoy that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think you're really hitting the nail on the head here about California uh, Cabernet Sauvignon blog or Sauvignon Cabernet Sauvignon. So if you look at this this color, it's so much different than the Pinot Noir, right? This is so much more deep, oh, yeah. um, fruiting. Yeah. There's some purple inflections in here. Um, a totally different wine. This is classic California Cabernet Sauvignon. It really is mm -hmm. delivering on what it's talking about. Sort of a richness mm -hmm. in the palate here. Um, sort of a dark cacao chocolate with you know plums and raspberries a little bit of sweet sage it's got so much going on here um that yeah. you know it, it's it's not it's not surprising that so many people love this variety um from this region and so for me how to enjoy this wine you know it's really from when you bring it in and to when you to when you drink it so getting the right glassware for a beautiful California Cabernet. A little bit larger of a glass helps that wine aerate and lets those beautiful aromas out. And if you have the ability, you know, a decanter, put it in a decanter a little bit before, maybe an hour before, if you are if you have the time. Uh, not too hot, maybe a little cooler than room temperature if you can. And don't forget to pair this wine with something really delicious. This wine is so great with food. Um, we're getting into barbecue season, as I mentioned. You know, this would be beautiful with a with a piece of beef. Um, and you know what? If if you're a vegetarian, that's great too. You can do some beautiful roasted portobello mushrooms on the grill. Would just be absolutely perfect with this as well. That sort of richness. Um, I, I I I could really enjoy this wine with a lot of different things. 
Absolutely. And you mentioned uh, decanting. And, and why don't you just uh, explain to us what decanting does? Like, I mean, I know that uh, it can really soften the tannins and, and something like Cabernet Sauvignon tends to have, you know, those those uh, bigger tannins uh, and, and decanting really helps to soften it. So it becomes a little bit more approachable as we uh, enjoy it with uh, on its own or with food. Yeah, so decanting, it's its great, and you know, you don't need to go out and get a really expensive decanter. I uh, often will use just a water jug um, because it's just about getting, uh, you know, the air, the, the wine exposed to oxygen. And if you can put mm -hmm. it, put it in a decanter about an hour before, that's great. So you can decant for a couple of reasons. One is if you have a really old wine or um, a wine that uh, might have sediment in it, you might want to separate that sediment so you don't have all the floaties in floaties in your wine uh, as you as you drink it. Um, that's one reason mm -hmm. you might uh, decant a bottle of wine. But the other one is just what you were saying, Laura. It's just for enhancing the experience of the wine, giving it a little bit of pop of oxygen, lifting those aromas out of the glass and bringing all of those different flavors and aromas into into play it's going to deliver a more enjoyable experience and you're going to get to taste these subtle notes in the wine maybe it's a little bit of the florality underneath or that dark chocolate cacao that's going to lift out of the wine and i think that cabernet sauvignon from california especially youthful ones can use an aeration mm -hmm. can use that decanting to to yeah. sort of elevate the drinking experience yeah i would agree absolutely mm -hmm. Well, thank you for explaining that to us. So our next wine is the 2018 Long Meadow Ranch Farm Dad Oops, Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. And I have to say, the nose is just lovely. It just jumps out all the flavors and aromas. Some ripe cassis, blackberry fruit, vanilla, herbal. It's quite layered and complex. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this really is a special occasion wine and probably something that you can hold and, and, and come back at maybe 10 years later and uh, it would just evolve in, in the bottle and again in the glass. Uh, so Emily, we've talked a little bit about Cabernet Sauvignon, AVAs, sustainability, food matching, California food scene, um, but we haven't really touched upon Napa Valley and its prominence um, as a premium wine growing region. So maybe we can talk about that a little bit now. Absolutely. So I agree with you. This is definitely for me a special occasion wine. Um, I love this wine. This is a great wine. I think that it's quite, um, it's full bodied, but it's elegant. Um, it's very textural. It's very layered. It has um, a lot of beautiful fruits that are both ripe and uh, just ripe. So that cassis, that blackberry, that sort of plum, black raspberry, but also a lot more than that, right? It has leather and tobacco, a little bit of sweet smoke. Um, this is a really beautiful wine. And um, I would endeavor to leave, lay this down for a little bit and come back to it and, and, and see how it's tasting maybe five years from now. And I, I think that it's uh, interesting to think about this wine, this uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in the context of what it is, the style, and in the global context of it. So, you know, California has been producing uh, wines for quite a while, not as much as sort of that Mecca, that motherland of, of Bordeaux and in France. And they used to, in California, really try to emulate that French style of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And um, they kind of, over the time, they've evolved into their own style. A little bit more fruit forward, a little bit more opulent on the palate. Um, but in the context of the world, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's a little different. And you'll see this new world style of, of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon echoed elsewhere in the world. So perhaps Australia or the North Island of uh, New Zealand. Um, there's mm -hmm. beautiful, Cabernet Sauvignon is coming out from all over the world. And even uh, here in, in Ontario, you see some great- uh, Yeah, Ontario and British Columbia. Columbia. Oh, absolutely. Uh, British Columbia has yeah. some great ones as well. So it's really yeah, interesting absolutely. when you look at California and the style that they've evolved to in the context of France yeah. and other new world regions. Uh, and I, I, I think that this is uh, this, this wine is a great example of premium yeah. uh, California. It's great. I would have to agree with you there, Emily. So we're approaching our final wine here. Mm -hmm. And again, this 
want to note that this is available exclusively online at lcbo.com and it's the 2018 Camus Sassoon Grand Duraf. Camus really needs no introduction. They're world renowned and are typically known for their world class Cabernet Sauvignon. But for a special treat today, we will be trying the Sassoon Grand Duraf. Emily, can you help demystify that label a little bit for us and then we can talk a little bit about the tasting? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was really excited about trying this wine. I've never tried this wine before. Yeah. Um, as you're saying, Laura, I sort of, uh, Camus is a very well-known producer in the region that, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of uh, premium wine, specifically uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, now, this Grand Duraf, now Duraf um, is a synonym for Petite Syrah, um, which has been actually produced in California for many, many decades, um, not in a huge proportion. Um, to give you a little bit of context, in Napa Valley, um, about 50% of the grapes are Cabernet Sauvignon, um, while uh, uh, Petit Sierra is about 2%. So it's not produced a lot, but it has been grown there for quite some time. So the synonym is Duraf. So instead of calling it sort of Petit Sierra, it's a little bit of a a little bit of a cheeky play on that, calling it Grand, um, the Grand Duraf. So because there's nothing petite about this wine, and I would agree that it is. Yeah quite a robust wine and style. So uh, it's, it's very interesting, this, uh, this, this variety coming out of California. The nose is just lovely. Yeah, it's interesting, I mean, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's quite a bit different right. than the other wines, isn't it? Like the fruit yeah. character is quite yeah. a bit different. Um, it's much more darker. It's brooding. There's a bit more sauvage in it. Like the fruits have kind of gone from that sort of juicy red fruits of strawberries and raspberries into like that kind of dark um, sort of plums and blueberries and blackberries. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of chocolate and chocolate and um, cacao nib and sort of a roasted note to it and brambly note to it. Um, it's very different. Well, and, and actually, I think that this is probably one of my, my favorite wines of, of the lineup today. It's quite full it's in the mouth as well. It really is beautiful. I'm getting, it's funny you say that. I do notice um, the blueberry. It's a pretty prominent uh, note that I'm picking up both on the palate and on the nose. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just so smooth. The, the tannins are quite luxurious um, and the finish just lasts on my palate for, I mean, it's still there resonating. So, um, and that's always a sign of, you know, great quality. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great, it's a great way to end off the tasting. It's a uh, stellar wine. So, um, yeah, thank you I think so. This, this is really great. I mean, with like a grilled venison or a grilled like lamb would be really nice with all those dark fruits. Um, I think yeah. that would be a really nice pairing with this. But you know what? Again, if you're if you're looking for something maybe without the meat, um, getting some sort of smoked vegetables on the grill wouldn't that be nice? Um, uh, eggplant, especially some sort of grilled mm -hmm. eggplant with this, and maybe a balsamic drizzle. I think would be really oh, wow. really lovely as well. Like that would that would be a perfect evening for me myself. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, you have made me quite hungry today, Emily. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I know what I'll be doing tonight after uh, after we finish up here. So, uh, geez, I don't know. They've all been so great, but uh, I want to thank you so much for being here and you know imparting so much knowledge uh, to 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 me and to our to our viewers today. It's been just wonderful to have you. So thank you, thank you very much for that. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure and uh, tasting through these great wines from you know, one of my favorite regions, California. So it's been great. Absolutely. Well, we'll have to have you back. And for those of you who want to keep in the know on upcoming vintage releases, please visit us at lcbo.com and click Vintages for more information. The products tasted today can be purchased online at lcbo.com, in store at select vintage outlets, we offer curbside pickup and same day pickup. And again, the Troublemaker and K. Miss Sassoon are available online at lcbo.com. Again, April 3rd release. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to enjoy our products responsibly. Thank you.